Now, a woman from Worcester fighting for justice for the victims of an NHS blood transfusion scandal is demanding that the government follows up its recent apology with compensation for victims. Colette Wintle, who leads the Tainted Blood Campaign Group, is one of an estimated 7,000 people who contracted diseases after being given contaminated plasma in the 70s and 80s. And she's out with us in the studio this morning. Hi, Colette. Hello, good morning. Just remind us how this scandal came about. Yes, um, the, the, the heart of the scandal was uh, government failure, which uh, we're going back to the 1970s, um, where Britain unfortunately did not invest in uh, the transfusion uh, service. And unfortunately, as a result of that, we ended up having to import uh, particularly products derived from plasma from the States. And as a result of that, over Five and a half thousand uh, haemophiliacs who were high reliant on on these particular products became exposed to multiple killer viruses. Um, the worst, I think, being uh, non A, non B, which they now refer to as hepatitis C. And of course, AIDS came along in the early nineteen eighties. All of it could have been avoided. So, I mean, there, there, was, well, there was a bit of a breakthrough, wasn't there? I mean, the last Parliament, I mean, David Cameron did actually apologise to victims. So um, what happens now? Where, where are we at? Well, that's what I'd like to ask uh, David Cameron, because um, prevarication seems to be um, the word of the day for me. Um, and, and I say that because... Going back as far as 18 months ago, he promised his own constituent that things would be sorted in six months. That came and and went as a deadline. It was then debated in January of this year in the House, which I attended. Well, I remember you came in and you you spoke to us then, didn't you? And cross-party, there was phenomenal support for what is, after all, and remains the worst disaster in the history of the NHS. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it, th- there, there was uh, a commitment given that uh, without question this would de- be dealt with as a matter of urgency uh, when the election uh, had come and gone. And, and indeed, prior to that, what also happened was that we had an apology in the House from David Cameron on the 25th of March of this year And part of that um, apology, he actually stated, I'd like to say sorry on behalf of the government for something that should not have happened. Mm. So it can't be any more clear than that, can it? It couldn't be more clear than that. And And there's money set aside as well, isn't there, for compensation? And he set aside a a laughable sum, uh, which to some people might sound a lot of money, but when you're looking at the United Kingdom as a whole, and let's not forget that while Scotland now has a devolved government, this all happened under a Westminster Mm. government. So when you're looking at the number of victims throughout the UK, as I said, there are over 5,500 and over 2,000 of those have now died. Um, It seems quite fantastic that, you know, that that urgency, that sense of urgency to deal with something that he recognises shouldn't have happened is just not happening. Well, you say it's a laughable amount of money. How much money is Sorry, I beg your pardon. I should have said £25 million is what he said he would set aside. But £25 million is a drop in the ocean when you look at what Ireland has done, for example, uh, if you use that as a model of how they recognise the harm and damage caused to people without admission of liability. Mm. And the average payment there was, I think, something like £500,000, which, again, is not a lot of money when you consider the losses that that person actually has sustained. So, Colette, what, what do you want to see happen now? I want him to actually uh, come out with the statement that he's been, been promising. And, and because it's not happened pre or post budget, I worry it's one of those things that either gets kicked into the long grass or it gets buried on a bad news day. You know, th- this is a classic thing that governments do. And what, uh, what I cannot understand is if we have had so much recognition and acknowledgement that this tragedy should never have occurred and it was a government made tragedy, let's be honest about this, the state caused the problem, the state have a responsibility morally and every other way to acknowledge what's happened to these victims. Why has it not happened and when is he going to do it? Because we're still waiting on a statement even now. My fear also is that instead of compensating people, that they're going to rehash the woefully inadequate funds that are run by Quangos now, which again was debated in January and when we're, we're actually agreed by MPs unfit for purpose.
So what would satisfy you then? What, what, what kind of thing do you want to see? What, what I've always wanted from the outset, when it became very, very obvious that this disaster could have been avoided and people were being deliberately infected by doctors, and that, that, that's what angers me, that not one person has been held to account here. So when they can talk about transparency and openness, we're far from it. We're, we're, they, they're absolutely the opposite in this um, circumstance. I want to be compensated. I don't want to have to fight for another year. I'm fighting for my life as it is. I'm mm. just about to complete six months of re- antiviral chemotherapy. You have no idea what it's like to go through that. This is the second time round for me. The next stage for me is liver cancer. That to me is horrific, that my life and everything around it has been destroyed by something that the state did to me. And I still have not had justice. And for all those that have passed away, including a friend of mine who passed away in April, who his, his wife wasn't able to tell him that anything had come even from the Penrose inquiry it was must have been terrible for her for all those victims that we've lost and friends that I've lost I want justice for their widows and families and for myself and my family too well Colette let's uh, let's hope you get it and uh, let's hope it doesn't take too much longer because it has been a long fight hasn't it this it's, it's most certainly has and that's what makes it all the more shameful okay. because clearly the government you know are not just dis- not displaying any signs of empathy here at all. Okay, thanks for uh, coming and talking to us again. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll speak again. We'll follow sure we we'll follow this story very closely. Uh, Colette Wintle there from the Tainted Blood Group.